In this video, we're going to learn how to create a simple post process material that can create a tinting effect like the one you see over here. So if I were to take the instance of this post process material, I can change the color to whatever I want. So if I wanted purple, I had purple, blue, green, you can select whatever color you want. I can also control the intensity of the tinting effect by controlling the scalar parameter over here. I can increase this or decrease this and that's it. The aim of this tutorial is to give you a rough idea on how to use the post process material and how to create something out of the post process material. This is a very simple post process material with only four nodes in total. So you can easily expand upon it and create more unique effects out of this. Alright, like in the previous video, I'm using the first person project template from Unreal Engine. And in the content browser over here, I'm going to right click and then select material. Give it a suitable name. And then double click it to go to material editor. In the material editor, go to details, scroll down and search for material over here, the material domain and change surface of the material domain surface to post process. The reason we are changing the material domain to a post process is because material domain defines the overall usage of a material. Since this material is meant to be used for a post process, we are setting the material domain as a post process. So one thing to keep in mind is that using a post process material will negatively affect the performance of your game, especially more so if you're planning to deploy this game on a low end device. So try to use post process materials as sparingly as possible. Now, if I were to create a color node that is a constant three vector and then connect it to emissive color over here and then we're going to apply some kind of color over here so something and kind of blue we want blue and then make sure to click apply I'll compile it and then over here we need to create a post process volume so we can test our post process so post process volume over here drag it out and then scale it up and yeah now go to the details panel and over here you can see rendering features click over here choose asset reference and then over there drag the material that we created before that is abc over here into the asset reference over here and now we have a reference to it yeah if i were to just move into it the whole view gets kind of like completely blue and this is not a tinting effect this is not the effect we are trying to aim for. Going back to the material editor over here. I'm just going to cut this off. So now we're going to create a scene texture. So type in scene texture. Now here you can see scene texture we have it here. So a scene texture basically this takes the whole camera data over here. This whole view data as a texture. And that's basically what this scene texture is. And in scene texture, go to details panel. And over here you can see scene texture ID. Take the scene color and change it to post process input zero. All right, this is necessary because of how Unreal handles and processes uh, the post process pipeline in it. In scene texture, from the color output, drag it out and type component mask. And in component mask, 
go to details and you over here in material expression component mask you have r g and b make sure to select b so a component mask basically masks out anything that isn't selected over here so over here it's the alpha channel over here that is going to be masked out and the reason we are doing this is because the scene texture the color output or scene texture outputs a float for data type that includes the alpha channel we don't need the alpha channel especially because we are trying to add a color onto the scene texture over here this color is a float 3 a float 4 and a float 3 can't be added and hence we are using a mask component over here to mask away the fourth value that is the alpha channel to make this a float 3 value and now using a lerp node we can just directly add them together see both of them are added together if i were to directly connect them then notice if i connect the output of the lerp node to the emissive color all of a sudden we got an error so if i were to remove this and then draw the mask value and then connect this to the emissive color it works no more errors and you can already see the effect in action now you can also use an add node instead of a lerp node both of them kind of are the same but they are also very different a lerp node basically lerps the value between a and b based on the value of alpha so if alpha is kind of like zero then the value like i can just test it out right now now if the value is zero notice over here there is no effect at all and notice what happens when i change the value to one it's completely blue so you can kind of control how much of the tinting effect do you want using the alpha channel of a lerp node the alpha value over here in this lerp material node so i'm just going to go and quickly remove these two and then create a parameter out of them create a scalar parameter call it intensity connected to the alpha over here and then delete this and then select vector parameter type that as color make sure to change this value to a higher value and then select any other color you want in the intensity also make sure to kind of give a value the default value to be something like 0 0.3 because by default the value is 0 so it will show nothing over here so now that it's 0 0.3 you can see something over here so apply again and then the post cross volume yeah now if i were to go into it immediately you can see this in action and now that we have created a parameter out of these two so a parameter in case you don't know uh, allow you to edit to create material instances out of a material and then modify them in real time but you can only modify the parameters or these parameterized uh, material nodes over here so over here i'm just going to go right click the material the post process material and then over here you have the option to create a material instance create it just select double click it and now you have these two options over here so i can change the color to something else if i want blue then i got a blue over here click save and it's not working oh yeah forgot forgot okay uh 
in the post process volume make sure to change the abc which is what is this is actually being referenced to to the material instance that we have created over here and now it works so if i were to change the material color again immediate result see and if i wanted to increase the intensity you see the intensity is now higher so both of, both of these were the material parameters that we have created before the intensity and the color over here you kind of get a rough idea on how this how a material editor works again you can kind of expand upon this and it really improve this by creating all kind of various effects and you can kind of control the uvs you can apply noise textures on top of this and add them together and you can kind of use sine waves to create more movement into it you can do so much more with this so this is just meant to be a really simple and basic kind of like introductory how to create something in the post process material and yeah that's it thanks for watching